Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought the Right, good evening and welcome to episode 50 for the Tech Bytes audio cast. I'm Tim, I'm here with Roy and also Rusty from the United States of America. So, without further ado, we're going to crack straight on with the show and a few topics in the tech world today. And I believe Rusty is going to start us off today. So, Rusty, it's all over to you. Okay, um, I don't actually know when they do this. I, I noticed because they were publishing today, but YouTube has apparently started making everything you upload to YouTube. You can license it in one of two ways. You can either use the standard YouTube license, or you can use a Creative Commons license. But I have really mixed feelings about it, because in my op- I don't know where y'all sit on this, but in my opinion, it doesn't feel like a true Creative Commons license, because as far as I can tell, it just enables for other YouTube users to use it in Google's YouTube editor, but they're still not doing it right if they download it for use on their own system and so forth. That uh, is that that's a, how I understand it, or do I have it slightly wrong here? Well, Roy, I think because you do most of the uploading for the TechBytes show. Uh, you've got a bit more experience with uploading films to YouTube. Have you noticed this at all? I sure know that uh, about a week ago, or last Sunday, there was no such option, so you couldn't possibly uh, choose a Creative Commons license, which is really a way of signaling what the license is. It's, it's really just about informing the uh, viewer. You know, you can use this thing freely based on the attribution and whatever, because, of course, you have also different versions of the Creative Commons, even though they try to uh, not proliferate these uh, in terms of... Uh, in term in, in in senses that basically would lead to confusion and, and uncertainty. But the the thing I found was uh, I uploaded the yesterday's episode uh, and uh, and I had options. I had a tick box basically for keeping sticking with the same YouTube license, which is the default option that's being ticked, uh, or to use the uh, Creative Commons. Uh, it's just Creative Commons obviously because I do want people to be able to share things. Um, but the the important thing here, I believe that YouTube is, is in fact trying to encourage people to uh, overcome the licensing issues. I also know that the way they handle uh, things like uh, copyrighted songs that they handle is they try to inform the user about the use. Uh, they don't do anything, uh, anything against the user, but they do try to actually get some verification of what's contained inside the file. And they try to gather information about the, for example, the tracks, but they don't really know much about the licensing. So one of the things I told you about before, and I know some some of the trolls and people who don't like the show were trying to uh, unfairly use against us, in fact, is some of the things we're using were Creative Commons licenses. We state very openly that the tracks that we use in the show are mostly being shared by the artists themselves to promote themselves. Uh, and you to basically text the files and then gives the link for the person to buy that too. So any person who goes to the video that contains a certain songs, they try to help the artist basically make sales, which is excellent. You know, so we contain something in the track and as a as a track in the uh, you know between intervals in the show, uh, and the artist can in fact make money out of that. So that's 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 all good news, and I I hope we will keep some doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I'm all for supporting the stuff, although I, I think the link to the artist is less about promoting the artist and more about just a blanket settlement for trying to deal with uh, DRM and content hoopla that goes along. What I really wish they'd let you do is put like a, an actual, like have some control over that so you make sure it's going to the right people. Uh, Sorry, Rusty. Uh, no, go ahead. And now I was just going to say, Roy, the question that uh, came up to me that I didn't um, have a chance to speak to you about in regards, I think it was episode 44, where this uh, this feature, in inverted commas, raised its head. How are they detecting this music within uh, our... I believe it's the same type of trick that uh, Shazam is using to 
basically sample parts of the songs. And the way they would do it efficiently, I suppose, is profiling the songs by looking at the indexing the uh, transition. Maybe they could detect drums, for example, and based on the drums, they could narrow things down to say, well, it could be one of the following million songs, and then they try to sample more and more and saying, well, it's narrowed down to this then, and it's definitely this song because we get the things to match. Now, it's a really hard issue, though, because how can you index all the things? And then you also have the metadata. You actually have to know how it's licensed. And well, how, do you, how do you detect fair use? I mean, exactly. There's well, no, as, they, now, that, as far as I can tell, because recently uh, my channel came under uh, copyright infringement uh, a few shows back. As far as I can tell, they're using the same technology like the app in your cell phone where you hold it up to the radio and it says that's the song playing. And if it's anything that's close enough to trigger that, they automatically assume infringement has occurred and label it as in violation. And then they enact based on who the copyright holder is, what they did. Like one of my videos, as soon as it got processed, was banned in Germany. Uh, another one, because it was a different copyright holder, just resulted in a link being to the song for, that was being played in the background of the commercial we were using under fair use. Mm -hmm. So they've largely automated that process. The problem is it, it doesn't discriminate between valid use and fair use. It just assumes infringement and does the settlement. It's, I mean, what, what I would like to know, because our intro music to this very show is um, a take on I Fought the Law. And if it's looking at certain drums, drum sequences or guitar riffs or whatever it's using to identify the the track in its index, it certainly hasn't picked that up with our intro music or when we use it as an outro track either. Uh, Tom Smith wrote that particular track, and like I say, it's a take on I fought the, fought the law. Um, but as I think we well, have you and, and I have noticed that that more often than not, those things don't get triggered by variation like that because I mean, I, I that, that was actually how I tested some of those. I put stuff like Weird Al's Internet Sandman. Uh, through it to see if it would confuse it with yeah. Metallica. You and can get the source code to actually get the algorithm. What one of the guys? I think he was based in the Netherlands. So yeah, he wrote pieces of code and actually sample code in Java. And a company which is doing all the identification, I believe they have some U.S. patents on that. They were trying to take things down, even though he is based in a place where software patents aren't valid. Uh, and of course, back then, I actually published the code myself because they were trying to take him down, even though it wasn't legal for them to do so. Eventually, they had to leave him alone because uh, the lawyers also told him, "Don't worry, they cannot do anything to you." Uh, but what the company is doing is they have this algorithm that basically sequences uh, things that are a very you, you probably think of a human year, but the way it works is is different from that. It's just more of a uh, they actually know what the track sounds like. If you change the speed of the track, it probably won't detect that. Just by slightly, if you change the speed of the track, like one 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 hundred point oh one percent or something. <laughs> Maybe more. It depends how many bits sque get squeezed in. But but it's just that uh, these uh, you know what they used to say about videos. And by the way, YouTube has far too much content being uploaded for any even data center of people actually sitting and just watching this stuff, which mm. even if they even if they did that, they don't really know what fair use is and what isn't because it's really too complicated to do. But the, the things that they used to say is, well, well, we'll scan the videos and try to find infringement. Well, all you have to do is tilt the videos by one degree and <laughs> that's it. So it's broken. And people used to say, yeah, it's, and it's true. It's, it's just that there is no best solution. All those companies trying to sell their signature-based things and uh, all kinds of uh, mathematical methods to do dealing with matrices or frequency. I, 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 I'm sorry, especially on video. At the end of the day, the only foolproof solution, like you're saying, is a human being sitting there and watching it, but literally you'd need a warehouse full of thousands of humans who don't yeah, sleep. Yeah, and, and more, more, you'd have as many people as are using YouTube and actually uploading content, and I, I recently, last week, I, I put up all the shows on YouTube, so that's about 70 hours of video. Now, if you can imagine that for one user like myself, they'd have to have a person sit there for 70 bloody hours and then make <laughs> a judgment of that, and I'm just one user. Lots of people doing this, this type of stuff. In this case, I uploaded half a year of shows basically but in, in some cases people do upload a lot of stuff legitimate stuff and, you know some of it extremely boring well, we, I've seen we, people we, just doing over like, here you know, we, we put up five to ten hours a week I mean that's that's uh, it's just, can you imagine a person doing what you do for free perhaps for free 
uh, and actually being paid for it, and actually having to be paid for, by, by Google to do that, to just watch your show, to just sit and watch your show, and to try and call things. It, it's just it's it's impractical. But but what the what what Google is trying to do is to reform copyright law and to say, well, look, you know, we we have this internet.